Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, Saturn's moon count has almost doubled, the fur colour of prehistoric mammals has been discovered, and scientists have looked at a rock from Mars that might actually have evidence of previous Martian life. If you haven't already seen our chaotic unboxing of the Spring Curiosity Box, check out our Dragon from Hell video to see some serious science and a little geographical confusion too. This is still this is a, 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 aluminum. Zinc, aluminium. brass, aluminum, and steel. Okay. And it's this is, aluminum. This is zinc. Oh, no, it's aluminium. It's not aluminum. It's yeah, aluminium. It? Okay, just having an argument with yourself. We're British. <laughs> Our main story this week is the announcement that observations of Saturn have resulted in the discovery of a host of new moons, nearly doubling how many we knew about before. 128 moons have been discovered around the famous ringed gas giant, bringing the total moon count up to 274, despite already hosting the most moons out of any planet in our solar system before this discovery. Saturn's new moons were found by astronomers making observations and analysing what they found from all over the globe. Perhaps unsurprisingly, none of the new moons are particularly big, and astronomers have said that they are likely the fragments of larger moons that were broken apart when colliding with other satellites around Saturn, or perhaps comets passing by Saturn's field of influence. A discovery of new moons around Saturn was expected during these observations, as astronomers have been trying for some time to answer questions about what the early life of Saturn was like. There seems to be an irregularly high number of small moons around, which would suggest that there was a collision within the Saturn system somewhere within the last 100 million years, which is fairly recent in the history of the planet. Indeed, the locations and sizes of many of the new moons would suggest this was the case and astronomers believe they have a good candidate for the location of the collision as well. Observations have been taken for years, and an initial run of observations made between 2019 and 2021 led to the discovery of 62 moons and a host of unknown objects. Further observations were taken in 2023, and the number of new moons was brought up to 128. While I'd love to tell you the reason I'm not listing the names of all of them is because it would take far too long, the new moons of Saturn don't actually have names, only provisional designations. The most recently discovered moon around Saturn to be named was Aegeon, which was discovered in 2008, but there are still plenty of moons, including some before that date, that still don't have one. In other very different space news, we have a study published in the journal Physical Review Letters that has used quantum physics to suggest that the centre of a black hole could lead to a white hole and a new look at the relationship between general relativity and quantum physics. Our general understanding of physics starts to break down at the singularity of a black hole, which is the point where all the matter that gets sucked into the black hole goes to. The study used a simplified model of a black hole. Instead of being spherical, this black hole's boundary is flat and two-dimensional. Using this model, they suggested that at the point where the singularity would be, there is instead a field of quantum fluctuations where space and time transition into a new phase, this being the white hole. This has been dubbed the new beginning instead of the obliterating end that the singularity usually represents. This paper suggests that a hypothetical observer that could pass through the black hole could in fact come out of the other side and be ejected from the white hole. In the study, the researchers proposed a link between time and dark energy, which is the unknown form of energy that is responsible for the acceleration of the universe's expansion. Their research measures time by dark energy, almost using it as a point of reference. This is probably a good time to remind you that all sources and further reading are in the description below. Also in the news this week, we've got an update on an exciting rock discovered on Mars that might have been created by alien activities. The Perseverance rover came across a sedimentary rock with many black ringed spots, and these spots look a lot like similar ones produced in Earth rocks due to microbial activities. This discovery was announced last July in a press release, but now it's been discussed further at the recent Lunar and Planetary Science Conference in Texas. 
Here, scientists talked about the initial results of chemical analyses of the spots undertaken using the rover's instruments, which indicate that the spots are enriched in certain elements. These enrichments are produced thanks to chemical reactions that, on Earth, are kick-started by microbial life. The reactions could also have occurred if the rock had been heated to great temperatures, but it doesn't look as though this has happened in this case. However, the researchers are still being very cautious. They state that we still don't know for a fact that these reactions could not have happened without the involvement of living organisms. And we'll need to wait until samples of the rock are transported back to Earth to be sure of the spot's origins. A very exciting development nonetheless, and a wonderful thought that we might just be looking at evidence of ancient alien microbes in this photo. First up in the paleontology news this week, scientists have worked out the colour of the fur of some prehistoric mammal relatives that lived alongside the dinosaurs. Recent discoveries over the past couple of decades have shown that preserved subcellular structures called melanosomes can be used to work out what colour certain fossilised feathers and scales would have been during life. We've therefore been able to tell a good deal about the life appearance of some well-preserved dinosaur fossils. However, a lot less is known about the colours of prehistoric mammalia forms, the mammal relatives that lived during the time of the dinosaurs. In this new research, paleontologists have studied the structures of melanosomes in 116 living mammals to figure out how their shapes relate to fur colour and then examined the fossilised hairs in six extinct mammalia forms. Although these prehistoric furballs were quite diverse in their lifestyles and anatomies, they all had fur that would have been dark greyish brown. The researchers take this as an indication of their nocturnal lifestyles, and being quite dull in colour probably also helped them keep concealed from large dinosaurian predators. It therefore seems that the diversity of modern mammal coloration only evolved after the extinction of the non-bird dinosaurs 66 million years ago, and before this time they were mostly pretty uniform in hair colour. Up next in the recent Paleo News, researchers in China have identified a site that preserves evidence of a terrestrial ecosystem that escaped the worst impacts of the infamous Great Dying, the most severe mass extinction event in the history of life on Earth. This extinction took place about 252 million years ago and marks the boundary between the older Permian period and the younger Triassic. An estimated 81% of marine species and about 70% of land living vertebrates were lost during this event. But at this site in northwestern China, it looks like much of the local vegetation made it through the worst of the extinction relatively unscathed. Some local plant species were still lost, but this terrestrial refuge fared much better compared to the marine realm at this time. The researchers hypothesised that the stable and semi-humid localised environment with plenty of consistent rainfall helped the plants to survive. They also found that within just 75,000 years of the end of the extinction, there were already diverse land animals living here again, indicating a very rapid recovery in this one particular region. In fact, its recovery was about 10 times faster than other terrestrial ecosystems. The paleontologists encourage the investigation of modern regions that may act as such life oases during the current mass extinction too, and highlight the importance of protecting such natural refuges. Also this week, paleoanthropologists have identified fragments of a hominin skull in Spain as the earliest human face in Western Europe found so far. The fragments recovered at the Cima del Elefante site in Spain make up parts of the maxilla and the zygomatic bone from the left side of the face of an adult individual. It has been generally accepted that Eurasia was first settled by hominins at, at least 1.8 million years ago. But this evidence is limited to extremely fragmentary fossil evidence from the Iberian Peninsula. Many questions surround this establishment and every new find brings us a deeper understanding. This specimen has been dated to between 1.8 to 1.1 million years ago, making it some of the earliest physical evidence found so far. The fragments do not display the modern-style flat midface found in Homo antecessor, the oldest known species of human from Western Europe, the remains of which have been found at the same site, but bear some similarities to Homo erectus. 
it has thus been tentatively assigned to this species, leaving room open for more evidence and further designation. This discovery now suggests Western Europe was populated by at least two Homo species during the early Pleistocene, this and later Homo antecessor. In other news, a man in Australia has become the first person to survive with a titanium heart for a hundred days. The artificial heart was implanted into the man to serve as a stopgap measure until a real donor heart was available. The heart in question is designed by American medical device company Bivacor and powered by an external portable controller that is charged by mains electricity overnight. The wire for the device goes from the heart through the stomach where it feeds into the external controller, but the eventual plan is to make the system more contained. Eventually, charging will be done through the skin using electromagnetic induction, allowing a user more general freedom. It only has one moving part, a rotor that is magnetically levitated and therefore does not make any contact with any other surface. It is designed this way to completely minimise wear and tear to give the artificial heart the highest possible durability. The man in Australia has become the first person to leave hospital with a titanium heart and was the sixth person in the world to use the device. He has since received a donor heart and it is reported that he is recovering well. Finally, for the news this week, a team of scientists from China, Germany and the US have analysed a large data set and found that plant contamination by microplastics can actually reduce photosynthesis. Microplastics have found their way into nearly every ecosystem on our planet and also contaminate animals, including humans. The data show that microplastics can reduce the production of chlorophyll, a green pigment found in plants that is needed for photosynthesis. This occurred in plants growing on land, in our oceans, and in freshwater. The reduction in photosynthetic efficiency across all three plant types varied from 7 to 12 percent. This results in approximately 4 to 14 percent loss in the harvest yield of maize, wheat, and rice around the globe, equating to an annual loss of 109 to 360 million metric tons of crop production. The data also showed that up to 7% of global aquatic net primary productivity could be lost, which equates to 1 to 24 metric tons of seafood production. The findings highlight the urgent need for effective plastic mitigation strategies to be implemented if our food security is to be safeguarded. Well, that's it for the news this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science. You can follow 7 Days of Science on Instagram and TikTok and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. As always, a big thank you to our patrons including Andrew Cowam, Clara Middleton, Drav Srivastava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Giotist, John French, Corey Peterson, Lena Rose, Matt Grandis, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Ralph Balzac, Robert Prietprajika Jr., Robert Thomas, Sammy Voss, Schlom, Stanforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thomas F. Conroy III, 